Welcome to Advanced Training, Character Modeling Part 7. I'm Matthew Doyle, and we're really moving right along here. We're down to the wire. We've only got one more video after this. And in this video, we're going to cover the collar, creating all the basic shapes for the collar. And we're starting out using a basic polygonal pipe from the polygon shelf. And we just need to basically give it the right thickness and height and so forth, the right radius using the attribute editor and then position it so that it matches the model sheet of our character. So you can see here I'm just moving it into place and doing all those adjustments from the attribute editor until I get it lined up as closely as possible to the model sheet. In this case the model sheet is a little distorted so but we know kind of what we wanted for a cat collar in this case so it's not too hard to figure out. So we're adjusting the radius and the thickness until we get it exactly how we want. So now that we have our basic collar shape, we're ready to add the loop where the belt runs through. So we'll just go into our modeling toolkit and using quad draw, we're going to add some edge rings here so that we can extrude the faces from this area to create the loop. And so we'll just select those faces and then extrude all of them out. And we've got to make sure that in the extrude mode, we set it to local. And then we'll go ahead and use extrude, and we get the right type of extrusion. Now we'll want to go ahead and extrude the faces on the other side of the loop. So we create the end of our collar. So we'll just select them, and once again, use extrude. We're also going to need to adjust the loop itself so that it sticks out further, because as you can see right now, that other side of the belt sticks out further than the loop. So we'll just select these face right here, the face below it and the face above it, and just pull them out using the Move tool. There we go. Now we need to separate the end of the belt from the rest of the belt here. We don't have to do that, but I think it'll be a little more interesting looking if we do. So I'm going to select these edges here where it would connect, go into Edit Mesh, and choose Detach. And that will detach those edges from the rest of the mesh. So now we'll just select all of these edges that comprise the end of our collar, the end of the belt. We'll select these on the top as well here. And we'll go into the rotate gizmo and then just rotate that out. And you can see how it's detached from the rest of the mesh there. We'll just position it a little better. And now we'll use the append to polygon tool to fill these holes in in the back. Just select the bottom edge and then select the top edge and do it on the other side as well. All right, looks good. Now let's select these edges here, the top and the bottom, and let's use the bevel tool to give us a more rounded shape. And then use the multi-cut tool to make sure we have all quads on the front and the back. And that should pretty much complete the basic shape of our collar. So now we're gonna look at the crease edge tool because if we go to our collar and we hit the three key, We'll notice that the edges are very, very soft, very rounded, and that's not at all what we want here. So we're going to use the Crease Edge tool to fix that. So the way we do that is we'll go into Edge Mode here, and we'll select the edges that we want to be hardened. So for the loop here, I'm selecting these outer edges, and I'll select them on both sides, and then use the Crease tool, and then you middle mouse click and drag on those edges, and you can see that interactively they get harder. And this will allow us to have a more hardened edge where we need it to be, and a soft edge where we need it to be. Now this doesn't really matter in the low poly version. It's mostly a visualization thing here in the high res version. But it can also be applied to things like normal mapping. So you get softened areas and hardened areas when you create your normal map. Alright, almost done with the loop here. You can see the visualization there of the hardened edges. They basically have a thicker line than the rest of the edges of the mesh. So that helps you to visualize which edges have been creased and which edges haven't. Alright, so let's go ahead and crease the edges of the rest of the collar. So we'll just go ahead and double click the edge rings around the top. Select these edge rings of the collar or belt end. And then we'll also need to double click the edge rings on the bottom part. All right, it looks like we've got them all selected. Now we'll just go ahead and 
use the crease tool to interactively set the crease we want here. Not too hard. We don't want it to be super sharp. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the tag of our character now. We'll start with a simple shape, in this case a plane. We'll move it into position here, and then we'll give it a 45 degree rotation on the z-axis in the front viewport, and then scale it up so it's more closely resembling the model sheet. Okay, so now we'll just use the extrude tool on that face to give it some thickness. And we'll scale the interior face in so it has more of a bevel. And finally, we will scale it non-uniformly on the y-axis here to give it more of a diamond shape. So now we're using the torus shape, the basic torus shape, to create the chain links. And we're going to give it a subdivision of 6. So it's more of a hexagonal shape here. And then we'll just position it into place. Now we'll rotate it 90 degrees on the y-axis for this first chain. And then we just need to duplicate this chain link a couple of times to give us the rest of the chain. And of course, rotating this one in alternate back to zero. And as we continue to go up, we'll continue to rotate them 90 degrees or back to zero so that they interlock. All right, and with the final chain links in place, we'll take the entire assembly and rotate it slightly and then position it onto the collar, and then that should be it. So let's move on. We've got the tail, which I almost forgot about. We need to add that to the back of our character here. We're going to need to add some edges here, so I'm going to snap at 50% on these edges to use the multi-cut tool and make a cut here. But obviously if I do that, that's going to give me five-sided polygons on either side. So we're going to need to use another trick to basically solve that problem. So to do that, we're just going to continue with multi-cut and draw a square here. And then come down and connect it right here to the other side. And once again, we're rounding it. We're basically turning it from horizontal to vertical. You can see here that we're going from the top part of our tail down the side of the buttocks. And then we're also going to make a final cut all the way across the buttocks to the other side. So from here to there. And that gives us all quads again. So into the face mode, we've got our tail part here. I'm just going to extrude that out. And I'll first need to make sure I'm no longer in world mode, but I'm in local mode on my transform options. We'll extrude that out, go into vertex mode, and then make some adjustments to the shape of the tail so it's more round like a tail should be. So we'll just move that top vert there and that top vert up a little bit. Likewise, we'll pull these bottom verts to the side and then just pull them up a little bit. Likewise with these interior ones here where they connect to the body, pull those up. Gives us more of a rounded tail shape. You can see what it looks like here in the highest subdivision level. Now we just need to make sure this is a nice flat coplanar surface here. Using the same trick, scaling those verts towards each other. A couple of times ought to do it. All right, now we can select these faces and just continue to extrude outwards. All right, and so we're just extruding and ex repeating that command until we get the full length of the tail that we want. That looks about right. And then we'll just scale down these verts at the very end of the tail to give it more of a rounded shape, and that will complete the tail of our character. Also, we need to add the hair on the head. Now, for a game character, we don't have the luxury of having every basic, basically every strand of hair on the character, like something you might see in a cutting-edge CG film. But what we're going to use are planes instead. And the planes will allow us to basically apply a texture that has transparency, or an alpha channel. And that alpha channel will allow us to create hair that is essentially a billboard. So you'll see all of the little strands of hair, but it'll really just be a single polygonal object with the texture applied. And we can create a bunch of these polygonal objects and just kind of layer them if we really want to. In fact, some of the more recent games, AAA games that you might play, have some pretty detailed hair setups on their characters with many layered polygons and all of them having that uh, alpha channel texture applied to them. In this case, we're only going to use one on each side of the head. So, anyway, we're just going to go ahead and skip ahead to the completion of the hair here. 
All right, so that was just like the scruff, basically. Our hair is now completed, and we can go ahead and duplicate it to the other side. So we'll go into Edit, and then choose Duplicate. And then we're going to go into the Attribute Editor for the plane and change the scale to negative 1, and that will flip it exactly to the other side of the head. Now, of course, that all depends on where the pivot point was, so you want to make sure the pivot point was at the center line of the character. And then finally, we will, of course, merge the hair billboards to the rest of the head. And of course, if you have flipped normals, just like before, you want to reverse those normals on the hair billboard. And there we go. Now that's ready for texturing to be applied to those billboards. So let's go ahead and select them and select the body and then choose Mesh Combine. Great, so our cat is basically fully modeled at this point. We're ready to UV map him and then texture him. <laughs>